The O'Hara incident was one of the most pivotal and important plot events in the story of One Piece. After all, an entire island got cleansed simply because they posed a danger of unveiling the dark secrets the world government wanted to hide from the world. But having said that, what if instead of Aokiji, another marine was sent in his place? What if that marine was Garp? Would this event still be known as O'Hara's destruction? Or would something else have happened instead? How about Nico Robin? In what different way would she experience these events, and how differently would she develop? And most importantly, how would all these impact the Straw Hats, and in general, the whole plot and story of One Piece? You see, this little twist sends ripples throughout the entire storyline, causing chaos, heartbreak, and a whole lot of what-the-heck-just-happened moments. Well, hear me out. In reality, there are three different ways this story could develop, all depending on what Garp does, who he's faced against, and what the outcome of his actions are. In all three situations, we assume that Garp betrays the Marines and takes the side of the O'Hara residents. If you think that's out of character for him, then I think you haven't been paying attention to the actual story of One Piece. Garp is always righteous and does not tolerate being told what to do, if he thinks he should not be doing that. But would Garp really decide to go up against the entire world government on his own? I mean, the world government is incredibly powerful, and he's just one guy, right? Well, you better bet that, yeah, this would not change his mind. I mean, remember this event takes place 22 whole years before present time, meaning Garp is now much closer to his prime. In the canon story, Garp is 78 years old, and all I'll say is that this guy is still among the strongest characters in the world. A single punch of his is enough to decimate an entire island. Now imagine how strong Garp really is at the age of 56. Yeah, this version of Garp means business when fighting. So what happens now that Garp decides to fight against the Marines? As we mentioned, there are three ways the story can play out. And well, all I'll say is that each timeline gets even more exciting than the previous one. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and let's begin. Before we get too deep into that, however, a small note. As you may have realized, One Piece has indeed shown many emotional moments with many characters going through extremely difficult situations in their journeys. Robin going through the Buster Call, Luffy losing Ace, Nami losing Bellamere, Zoro losing Queena, Sanji losing his mother. Basically, every last straw hat went through a really difficult situation at some point in their lives. A major point that Oda expresses through this work is the importance the right people play in these difficult situations. Just like Jinbei was there for Luffy when he needed him the most, well, all I'll say is that life sometimes hits hard, and every last one of us needs the emotional support when that happens. That's exactly why I would like to thank BetterHelp for making today's video possible. Through this paid sponsorship, I would briefly like to emphasize the importance trained mental health professionals play in moments where, well, you might not be at your best. It happens to the best of us. And all I'll say is that with the right help, better days will come. Whether you need a safe space to talk, someone to listen, provide insights and teach techniques to manage emotions, reduce stress, and make positive changes in your life, BetterHelp is on a mission to make starting therapy easier. Fill out a questionnaire and you'll be matched with a therapist in as little as a couple of days. With over 7,000 reviews and a 4.5 rating on Trustpilot, BetterHelp is a platform you can trust. BetterHelp makes therapy a safe space where you can share what's on your mind, whether it's stress, sadness, worries, or relationship issues, with no fear of judgment whatsoever. And if you think that therapy is only for people with clinical depression, well, that's actually not true. Think of therapy as a tool for personal growth. It helps you better understand yourself, develop healthier habits, and learn effective ways to cope with and solve problems, leading to improved mental and emotional well-being. If you're struggling and think you'd benefit from a therapy session, click the link in the description, or go to betterhelp.com slash Akagami and get 10% off your first month of therapy. A special thank you to BetterHelp for supporting the channel and for the work they do every day. Having said that, let's now get back to our video. Let's start with the happiest of the three outcomes, where Garp successfully protects Robin and escorts her back to safety, where he trains her in order to become a Marine, and thus try to change the rotten system from within. But why Robin of all people? And how would she be able to become a Marine? After all, the entire world will be looking for her, right? Give it a moment. It'll all make sense in a bit. But for now, first things first, Garp versus the Marines. Well, as we said, Garp is just one man, and even though he's built different, he cannot be at multiple places at the same time. Robin being a young girl, Garp would surely prioritize her over everyone else. Plus, it's easier to sneak her out. So, Garp engages in battle with multiple Marines at the same time, Akainu being among them. Not only is Garp closer to Prime, but Akainu is not even close to his Prime, as he's quite young at this stage. Garp is on a whole different level here. Garp is taking down Marine ships left and right, all while keeping as many scholars as he can safe. But, well, hold on, because the world government doesn't take rebellion lightly. Akainu does have the numbers with him, and he can always call for more backups. When he does this, the battle becomes even more fierce. If you thought Marineford was intense, then think again. This is on another level. Buildings are crumbling, the sea's boiling, it's like Marineford all over again, but worse. At some point, Garp is simply overwhelmed with the sheer number of reinforcements. People are executed next to him, and he simply cannot protect all of them. His only solution? To take the young Robin and run away. And even though the Marines would chase him, in this version of the story, in the very least, we assume that Garp would 
would be able to escape. So what now? Garp has escaped with Nico Robin, but why would Garp want her to become a Marine? And how would Robin even be able to join the ranks when they're in fact chasing her? Hear me out. It's not like Garp was not aware of the corruption that happened and keeps happening in the Marines' ranks. But even like that, he never left them. And he even tried to have Luffy, Ace, and Sabo become Marines as well. What does this mean? Garp has some plans for his own students and how they should behave within the Marine ranks. In my opinion, it's one of these two things. The first theory is that Garp wants an insider within the world government, just like he is, so that when the right time comes, they can betray him and thus destroy them from within. This theory claims that Garp's motives are the same as Dragon's, but instead of abandoning the Marines like Dragon did, Garp instead chooses to stay close and observe how they work. When the time comes, according to this theory, Garp, Luffy, and Dragon will work together against the corruption of the world government. The second theory in regards to this is that Garp wants his students to be the actual change within the Marines, meaning achieve a high position in their ranks and then start acting righteously, just like the Marines are meant to actually work. If we guess right with one of these two theories, then Garp wanting Robin to join the Marines does indeed make sense. Okay, but here another problem arises. How would Robin manage to do that if everyone's looking for her? Here, we will assume that Garp finds a way for Robin to change her appearance and thus go undercover, either through a devil fruit power that someone else consumed and helped Robin, since we still assume that this is the version of the story Robin somehow consumes the Hana Hana no Mi, like in the original story, or perhaps through another way. I mean, the world of One Piece is vast and crazy, with all kinds of mind-blowing physics, laws, and situations. Maybe Vegapunk could assist Garp in this. After all, Vegapunk and Dragon are friends. Maybe this is the case with Vegapunk and Garp as well. Who knows? Because of that, we assume that Nico Robin manages to change her appearance and thus go undercover from here onwards. Garp does not change his appearance because he simply doesn't care. I mean, you know Garp. He doesn't become a pirate, but at the same time, he does not go back to the Marines either. He simply lives his days with some moderate level of going under the shadows. After all, if someone spots him, it's not like many people can even fight him, right? Okay, so what are the changes that happen in the One Piece story because of what we just described? Well, on the side of the Straw Hats, the story kind of develops in a similar way to the way that it did in the original, until the Alabasta arc where Nico Robin's absence does mean there will be some small changes from here onwards. I mean, on Robin's side, Garp has been helping and training her for the past few years, in which Robin then went on to enroll in the Marines. And if you thought that this would mean one of these two things, remember it again. Robin is 11 years older than Luffy. Also note that enrolling in the Marines in the world of One Piece happens quite early, sometimes even in early teenage years. So yeah, this means that by the time Robin enrolls in the Marines, the three brothers are barely children, meaning that Garp wouldn't be absent from the lives of Luffy, Ace, or Sabo since he's now training Robin, nor would Robin meet the three brothers. In reality, these things happen in chronological order. Garp saves Robin from the Marines during the O'Hara's Buster Call, he helps her change her appearance, train her, and then has her enroll in the Marines. After that, Garp goes back to train the three brothers of Luffy, Sabo, and Ace, similar to what happened in the original story. So, the story does not really change when compared to the original, until the point Robin appeared in the canon story, meaning Alabasta. In this arc, since in our timeline Robin now has a different role and is not a part of Baroque works, things will indeed start getting a bit tricky and quite interesting if you ask me. So, with that in mind, let's explain how the story changes starting from the Alabasta arc. During this arc, Robin's absence makes the win of the Straw Hats even easier. However, on the downside, the Straw Hats now lack a very important member in their crew, since Robin is meant to join them after the Alabasta arc. An archaeologist that can read the Poneglyphs is now missing from the crew, right? And the result of that? When the Straw Hats find the various Poneglyphs they did in the original story, they can't actually read them. What they do instead is that they copy them on a piece of paper just like Brooke did in Whole Cake Island, so that when they find someone capable of reading them, they can find out what they say. Thankfully, until the Straw Hats find all four Poneglyphs, this doesn't really matter in regards to the path they take. As long as they have someone capable of deciphering them before the end of the series, I suppose they can still achieve their goals, if Robin's absence allows them to reach this far. But will that happen? Let's find out. After Alabasta Arc, the next major arcs in line are Jaya, Skypea, Water 7, and Ennis Lobby. So what happens here? As far as Jaya and Skypea, we'll just assume that the Straw Hats manage to deal with their opponents even without Robin's help. Whatever Poneglyph they find, they just copy what it writes, and from there, they keep on going. When it comes to Water 7 and Ennis Lobby now, well, things are indeed a bit different. You see, CP9's goal in Water 7 was to abduct Nico Robin and hand her over to Spandim. They didn't really care about the Straw Hats at this point, since they're basically just rookies, meaning that the Straw Hats move on from here without battling either the CP9 nor declaring world on the world government in any's lobby. No Luffy Gear 2, no Luffy Gear 3, no Chopper eating the third Rumble Ball, no Zoro cutting the sea train in half, no Soga King burning the world government flag, no iconic I want to live moment, no Luffy versus Luchi? Yeah, I know, this all sucks. But moving on with the rest of the arcs in our story, truth be told, in terms of fighting ability in the canon story, Nico Robin is surely no joke. But having said that, I don't really think the Straw Hats would really fail without 
louder. That is, in the fighting aspect. Robin's actual role is more centered towards deciphering the Poneglyphs. But for now, we'll just assume that the Straw Hats managed to survive their battles even without Robin by their side. I mean, sure, there were moments that Robin saved her friends, like in Wano, where she fought Black Maria for the sake of Sanji, but still, I believe the Straw Hats would somehow pull it off like they always do. So, what is the significant change in this version of the story? And how will the Straw Hats be able to read the Poneglyphs? Well, hear me out. First things first, how strong is Nico Robin in our story? Well, you see, Nico Robin is now much stronger in this version of One Piece. She now has all forms of hockey since she learned from the best, Garp. Something that, as a matter of fact, aka the lack of hockey, is the main drawback of hers in the real story. Robin also receives formal training as a Marine, which further helps her develop. When it comes to her goals, Robin still tries to find the secrets of the Void Century, but she does so in secret this time through the Marine ranks. Given that she's now much stronger, she's sent out on important missions throughout the course of One Piece, which again helps her develop and even acquire a significant rank in the Marines. Maybe even the place of a Vice Admiral, or at the very least, Rear Admiral. Which of these do you think she would get? Let us know in the comments down below. But back to the story, at some point, Robin faces against the Straw Hats. When revealed that Luffy is Garp's grandson, she does not engage them fully, but she doesn't really join them either. She sees their conviction, ideals, and general energy they have as a crew. Luffy even reminds her of Garp that she, of course, has huge appreciation for. She decides that when the time comes, she will indeed betray the Marines, reveal her identity, and join forces with the Straw Hats to help them find the One Piece. When that time comes, Garp also emerges from the shadows and joins forces with the Straw Hats and Robin to help them achieve their goals. I mean, in this version of One Piece, Luffy might become the Pirate King even easier than what it might happen in the original story. So, for our first timeline, I suppose things do pan out pretty good, right? But how about the second way this story could play out? Hear this. In reality, in our three timelines, everything depends on whether Garp escapes, surrenders, or dies in the Battle of Ohara. In our first timeline, we assume that Garp escaped alongside Robin. Well, let's now see what would happen if Garp did not manage to escape on time that easily. Here is what happens in our second timeline. We are now back at Ohara's Buster Call, right? A ferocious battle ensues. As we explained in the first timeline as well, Garp does have a lot on his plate with trying to fight everyone on his own. But what if he just cannot handle all of it? What if he is wounded so much that escaping with Robin is just not possible at this point? In that case, here's what we assume. Garp stays behind and stalls everyone while Robin makes a run for it. Robin manages to escape in a fashion similar to what happened in the original story. Once Garp's job is done, he surrenders and lets the Marines arrest him. Garp is not publicly executed out of respect for his previous help during the God Valley incident, but he is indeed sent to life in prison for his actions in Ohara. But where will Robin go now that she escaped? You see, before Garp let her go, he instructed Robin to go find Dragon and become a part of the Revolutionary Army. Similarly to the theory we analyzed in the first timeline, Garp and Dragon might not be rivals after all, but communicate with each other, having the same goal, but utilizing different methods to achieve it. If this is the case, then Garp surely knows where Dragon is located and thus can tell Robin where to look for him. So in this timeline, the essence is this. Garp is sent to life in prison while Robin becomes an official part of the Revolutionary Army. Robin is once again more powerful than what she was in the original story, given the constant help and training she receives from Dragon. And having said that, let's now get to the exciting part of this version of One Piece. So in the first timeline, we analyzed how Garp did escape and thus could still be present for all the events that followed in the story. He could still help Roger by protecting Ace while being undercover. But yeah, I guess Kobe's development might not have been the same without him being present in the Marines. But I guess that was not so important. In this case, however, Garp's absence is even more obvious. Why? Because remember this, Garp was responsible in training Luffy, Ace, and Sabo from time to time whenever he could. Even though he did not really manage to convince the three brothers to become Marines, the essence still remains. Garp did help the three brothers become stronger. So now that he's absent, what happens? Well, hear this. Not only does Garp not train the three brothers, he's not even present to have all three of them trained together. Ace, for example, was brought there two years after the Ohara incident. But since Garp is now in prison, if someone saves Ace when he is born, that someone is not Garp. Plus, by the time Sabo and Ace are born, Garp is once again in prison. Thus, Luffy, Sabo, and Ace never actually meet each other. We assume that Luffy does manage to survive long enough to a point that he becomes strong enough to handle his own, even without the initial help from Garp. The most significant changes that happen in this version of the story is that 1. Garp is now locked and impelled down. 2. Robin is part of the Revolutionary Army. 3. Luffy, Ace, and Sabo are not brothers in this version of the story. So what happens from here onwards? We assume that Robin wants to help free Garp from impelled down. Drag however, refuses to. He knows Garp all too well, and knows that my guy is just not bothered anyway. I mean, Garp can probably break out of prison whenever he wants to. He just chills there and waits for the right time to do so. Robin, however, wants to repay the favor to Garp for saving her, and thus does not listen to what Dragon says. So what does she do? Hear this. Robin tracks down Luffy and explains to him that Garp is his grandfather, and thus convinces him to come with her to try and rescue him. On a small note, if Ace is indeed alive in this version of the story, because remember, he still needs someone
someone to help him when he is born so that the world government does not get his hands on him. Here at this point, he's imprisoned, similar to what happened in the original story. Once Robin gets Luffy on board to save his grandfather, the two of them team up together, all outside of Dragon's knowledge, by the way, and start their journey to free Garp. We'll assume that they somehow manage to reach Garp, and similarly to what happened in the original story, Blackbeard takes advantage of the situation to gather his crew from Impel Down. But will Garp go with them? Not so likely. As we mentioned, Garp does not really care about breaking out. Once he wants to do that, he does not need the help of some rookies to do so. So what happens after that now? Well, Ace is sent to Marineford, but unlike the original story, Luffy is not present. After all, Ace is just a stranger to him in this timeline. Ace is executed without Luffy's help, and Whitebeard is also killed while trying to take revenge from Akainu. All the wounds he sustained throughout the war, in combination with his condition and old age, led to his death in this version of the story as well. Blackbeard acquires Whitebeard's devil fruit and also becomes a Yonko. But back to Luffy and Robin now. Robin and Luffy did make contact and impel down, right? And the result of that? Robin informs Luffy of his other family member as well, Dragon. Because of that, Robin leads Luffy to Dragon and has the two of them meet. But since we do not really know most things about Dragon, predicting what happens from here onwards is kind of difficult, if not impossible at this stage. But we will say this. Luffy finds out all kinds of things from his father, including who his mother is, secrets about the Void Century, or about the world government that only Dragon knows. And generally, many mysteries about the world are now solved due to Luffy's interaction with Dragon. When Luffy encounters Sabo, this does not really mean anything. As again, these two are now strangers, without Garp bringing them together. And since Robin and Luffy now meet each other, and we can say that they're on good terms, the Straw Hats can give Robin the copies of the Poneglyphs they got so far. Once Robin deciphers them, the Straw Hats are now once again back on their way to continue their trip. This time around, knowing a whole lot more about the true history and secrets of One Piece than they originally knew in the normal story of One Piece. But the worst part about this version of One Piece is that without Ace's death that caused a huge emotional damage to Luffy, the Straw Hats never undergo the two-year time skip. And because of that, they're way too weak to handle the challenges that are about to come. The Straw Hats all tragically die in Fishman Island. Luffy did not polish his hockey. He cannot use Red Hawk. Zoro's not even close to how strong he was. Sanji's the same. I mean, basically, this goes for every single member of the crew. Plus, the Straw Hats have one less member in this version of the story, as Robin is now part of the Revolutionary Army instead. The Straw Hats all tragically die. But, well, we still need to speak about a few loose ends. Garp is still alive. And as we mentioned, when he wants to, he can simply break out of prison. Here's what we assume happens. During the end game of One Piece, Garp breaks out and sides with his son Dragon. But once again, unfortunately, we cannot know what happens here because the question marks regarding the end game of One Piece are still a lot and unexplored. The essence is this. Luffy is dead. Ace is dead. Garp escaped the prison and sided with Dragon. What happens from here onwards? Well, until the end of One Piece is drawn by Oda, your guess would be as good as mine, to be honest. If I had to bet on someone to become the next Pirate King, I think that someone would be Lord Buggy. But what do you guys think? Would Buggy become the next Pirate King in this version of the story or not? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. But hold on, because even though that was indeed the end of One Piece at our second timeline, we're still not done with the video. Why? Because now we have to speak about the third way the story can play out. As we explained in the previous two points, the story changes depending on what happens with Garp during O'Hara's Buster Call. Here, the third way the story can play out is the following. Garp fights against all the Marines on his own, but as it turns out, the overwhelming numbers of strong fighters the world government keeps bringing turns out to be too much for Garp. Garp is eventually killed for going against the world government, but not before making sure that Robin survives and safely escapes. How does this play out now? Well, similarly to the original story, Robin's path is pretty similar to the canon story, aka she joins the Baroque works after being on the run for most of her early life. When it comes to Luffy, Solo, and Ace, similarly to the second timeline, these three never actually become brothers, as the one who brought them together was Garp, who is now dead. And well, similar to what happened in the second timeline we analyzed, Ace's death during Marineford does not really have an impact on Luffy, meaning that the Straw Hats do not go through the two-year time skip, and as a result, all tragically die during the Fishman Island arc. The main difference within timeline number two is that here, both Nico Robin and Garp are also dead. Click on this video next, where I'm creating the strongest One Piece character possible. But this time around, luck is involved as well. Go on, check it out!